Alrighty boys, so in the previous video, we went over uh, doing basic cuts and relays. Now we're going to be getting into a little bit more of some advanced stuff. Stuff that's not really even understood at the varsity level of high school and even into the collegiate levels of baseball. This stuff is very complicated. I do not expect you to understand this on the first time through watching. I expect you to watch this over and over and over again. I expect you to have many questions. Please ask as many questions as you want to understand this. It is very challenging. I know you're not going to understand this the first time through. We're going over double cuts. Our first tell we're gonna go over is when we know how to, when we're going to set up a double cut. Our first tell to set up a double cut is the second that we see our outfielders turn their back and we see our outfielders numbers when they're running to try to track this baseball. This is most likely balls in the gaps, balls over our outfielders heads and balls down the line. We know that this play is going to be more than a single. We know that this play is going to either be a double or a triple. We want to limit this runner to only a double. We don't want him to get any more. We don't want him to get the extra 90 feet for a triple. Avoid runners getting 90 feet close to the home plate. We want to limit this to just a double. And if we can, even get an out on a relay play or something like that. So the best way I could explain this is just going straight into examples. Say we're going to start off with a ball that's smoked into the left center gap. Our left fielder and our center fielder obviously will be going for this baseball. Our shortstop it will be our cutoff man. It's most likely setting up a cut three, assuming this guy has automatically already has a double. We are setting up a cut three situation. Our, our shortstop, our cutoff man, you must remember once again the three Ds, your distance, your direction, and your decision. Your distance. For a double cut situation, you need to set yourself up as far away from your outfielder that you know he can reach you on a line drive. That is our cutoff. You need to set yourself up as far away from our outfielder that you know he can reach you on a line drive. As our shortstop, as our cutoff man, you need to know the exact arm strength of all three of your outfielders. You need to know exactly how to set up your cutoff. So once we see that this ball's in the gap, we know that this ball's more than double. We have our shortstop going out for the cut. Our second baseman, what you're doing is you're tracking now over to the shortstop side of the infield. You're coming over this way and you're setting yourself up behind the shortstop. So right here's our shortstop, right here's our second baseman. You wanna be setting yourself up about 30 to 40 feet behind the shortstop in case there's either an overthrow or an underthrow that comes from the outfield. Now the term double cut is deceiving. You are not, you are not a second cutoff man. You are backing up our shortstop. You're dragging yourself over backing up 30, 40 feet behind our shortstop, looking for an error throw that's made, coming in either an overthrow or an underthrow, so that way you're there, so that, way that ball is not rolling through the infield, allowing a runner to get an extra 90 feet. You need to be tracking over 30, 40 feet behind our shortstop, ready to make a play, ready to make the decision on where to go with the next ball. As you are running over to, set, to back up your shortstop, you need to be turning to your first baseman. You need to signal to your first baseman that he has a job to do as well. Our first baseman, the second you see our second baseman vacate his position to go back up shortstop, as the first baseman, you must start tracking your way over. Now you are not running in line with our runner. You wanna let this runner go past you. And once this runner goes past you is when you wanna start your run to second base. You wanna be behind this runner the entire way to second base so that way you're trying to be deceptive so that way he, know, he doesn't know that you were there. You're looking to sneak in at the last second to try to backdoor this runner at second base. We are vacating first base. There's no longer a need for first base anymore. The guys hit a double, nobody on. Congratulations, good for him. There's no longer a need for first base. Vacate it, get to your next base. Our third baseman obviously has third base, looking for a play there. Our catcher's at home, signaling you, directing traffic. Our right fielder is coming in. You're looking to back up second base, a potential play at this spot. Our pitcher, you're backing up third base, most likely for a play at third, you're looking to cut off the triple. So once again, just going over your base roll on a ball hit to left center that we know is a double at least. Our center fielder and left fielder are going for the ball. Our right fielder, you're backing up second base. Our shortstop's going out for a cut. Our second baseman's tracking over 30 to 40 feet behind our shortstop, looking to get any, enter, any errant throw coming in from the outfield. You are not a second cut. The ball is not coming to you if it's a good throw. Our shortstop's fielding this ball and looking to go to the next play where this ball needs to go. Our first baseman's back dooring at second base. 
third base at base, pitcher, back on third base, catcher at home. Simple, everybody has a job to do. Everybody's communicating, talking, letting each other know what to do on the field. Team defense. So now we're going to go over a ball hit to, say, right center. A ball hits right center, it's the same thing. Our center fielder and our right fielder are going for this baseball. In this situation, to me, as a coach, it does not matter. It comes down to a communication thing. Just know the second baseman or shortstop, who is the first person in the cutoff. In this situation, let's say the second baseman is the first person. He's going to come out. He's going to set himself up. That's not straight. Once again, that's bad direction there. So set yourself up. Same thing as the shortstop, the right distance. So you know the outfielder can hit you on a line drive throw. The furthest distance the outfielder can hit you on a line drive throw. Our shortstop is backing up our second baseman as the cut. Once again, 30 to 40 feet behind our second baseman, just like he did for you when the ball was hit the left center. 30 to 40 feet behind the second baseman, looking for an errant throw, looking to make the next play. Our third baseman is third base. Our left fielder is coming in, looking to either back up second base or third base. That's your read. You're determining on where the play is happening. If there's a play at second base, you're backing up the play at second base. If there's a play at third base, you're backing up third base. Our first baseman has the same responsibility. He's looking to backdoor this guy, waiting for him to go by, looking to backdoor this guy at second base. Sneak in behind, get a quick back pick, bang, tag him out at second base. Our catcher is at home, and our pitcher is tracking his way over. Our pitcher will be backing up third base. Our pitcher cannot stand still in the middle of the diamond anymore. Now that we're on the big diamond, it's important, imperative, that our pitcher is backing up bases where he needs to be. So that is that on balls in the right center and left center gap. The same cut, double cut situation would happen on a ball down the left. The first situation we went over with our shortstop, that situation would be the same, say the ball was hit down the left field line. Our shortstop would be the cut, our second baseman tracks over, first baseman back up. Where we start to get a little bit of difference in our cut is when a ball is hit down the right field line. Say the ball is hit down here towards a foul pole, on the right field foul pole. Our right fielder is going for the ball. Our center fielder is going to back up. Our second baseman is our cutoff. Now this is where we get a little diff. Instead of our shortstop going all the way over, our shortstop is coming and covering second base. So in this case, we need somebody backing up our long throw coming in from the outfield. We're going to use our first baseman. Our first baseman is going to come behind our second baseman, about 30 to 40 feet behind our second baseman, looking for that errant throw, looking to make the next play. Our shortstop has second base, our third base is at third base. Once again, the only difference is that our first baseman on a ball down the right field line, our first baseman is becoming the backup cutoff man to our second baseman. So our second baseman, 30 to 40 feet behind him, will be our first baseman, looking for the underthrow or overthrow. Our, at second base will be our shortstop, creeping in, looking to back pick. You're not anchoring second base, you're not anchoring second base. You're looking for a back pick. And all of a sudden, if there's a cut three, line yourself up in a cut three situation. Our left fielder, looking to track behind, looking to either back up second base or third base, same thing. You are reading the play, knowing what needs to happen. Catcher is at home, and our pitcher is backing up third base. Once again, that is the only time a basic cut, double cut situation with nobody on that we change up things. So now, where we begin to get very confusing is when all of a sudden we have to throw a runner on base. Most likely going to be when there's a runner on first base. So right here, we're going to take a blue marker. We're going to signal that there, we have a runner on first base. The reason that this began to get confusing is what happens with people covering bases. So say we have a ball hit into the left center gap. We are going to have our left fielder and center fielder going for this baseball. Our third baseman will be covering third base. Our shortstop will go out for the double cup. Our second baseman, just like in the first uh, scenario, is backing him up 30 to 40 feet. Now instead of having our first baseman cover second base, our first baseman is making his way 
to the in cut of the infield and you're looking to set up how you would in a normal cut four situation. You're lining yourself up with the shortstop and home plate to put yourself in a straight line from that ball to home. Now this ball will be coming in, presumably for a play at the plate with this guy coming from first base. You are looking to either cut this ball off and throw it home. You're either looking to cut this ball off and go to the next play for the batter runner, who's probably going to be at second base or third base. Or you're looking to let this ball go through on a straight line to home. We have a play at the plate looking to make a bang, bang play. Our first baseman comes into the end cut. Our pitcher is going to come to the third base line. You are not backing up home in this instance. You are looking for what the play is, similar to what the left fielder had to do in our double cut situation. You are looking to see if this ball, if this play is going to third base or home. The second you realize where this play is going to be happening, that is when you make your break to back up. You are coming out, you are hanging out in the third base line, out of the way of the runner for when he's running, rounding the base. You're back here and you're determining if you're backing up home or if you need to be backing up third base. That's the determination on the play. Now I'm sure you're wondering, who is covering second base? Once again, we're vacating first base. In our previous instances, because once the reason we're vacating first base is that uh, there's no longer any for it. The guy hit a ball in the gap. There's no longer there's no play at first base. Now I understand you're confused as to why second base is vacated. In previous examples, we had first base looking to backdoor this guy. The reason that this gets confusing is because all of a sudden we take our guy from the outfield, our guy from the outfield is coming in and our right fielder is covering second base. You are busting your rear end to get to second base. It is very confusing, but once again, everybody has a role to complete. So ball to left center, our shortstop is coming over to be our cutoff man. Ball's going to the shortstop. Our second baseman, 30 to 40 feet behind our shortstop, looking for any errant throw, underthrow, overthrow, and picking up what the shortstop could have done with the baseball. Our first baseman's coming into the in cut of the infield, looking to be a cut four on a play for home. Our right fielder is sprinting to second base in case we have a play at second base. Our pitcher is waiting to see if he's backing up third or home, depending on the play. And our third baseman obviously has home. Our catcher obviously, our third baseman obviously is at third base. Our catcher is obviously at home. Again, that gets very confusing. I do not expect you to understand that on your first watch. I expect you to rewatch that. I expect you to have questions. Rewatch it. Try to understand as best as possible. Ask questions, please. I will answer them to the best of my ability. It is very confusing. You will not understand it your first time watching. Now we will go over my ball to right center. Very similar. Very similar, except who's covering second base. Right center, right fielder and center fielder going for this baseball. We have our second baseman, who will be our cutoff man. We will have our shortstop tracking over, being that second cutoff man in case of the overthrow or underthrow. Our first baseman, very similar. You're coming to the in cut of the infield, looking for, uh, for that play at the plate, just like we were in the previous example. Our third baseman has third base, our catcher is at home, plays at the plate, will play at third base there potentially. Once again, second base is, va is vacated. Somebody needs to fill that role. We have our left fielder sprinting in, busting it to second base in case we have a play there. That base cannot be left open that needs to be filled. Our pitcher, once again, coming into the third base line, reading if you're backing up the third base or home. Very similar to the previous example, just with who's covering the switch of roles, our left fielder now on a ball to right center is covering second base. Very confusing, rewatch it if you have to. Ask questions if you need. I will answer them to the best of my ability. Now, we'll go over to redraw all the red. We'll go over a ball that is hit down the lines. We're going to start with the more confusing one. We're going to start on a ball hit down the right field line towards the right field foul pole. Our center fielder is tracking over, our right fielder tracking over to get the baseball. Third base has third base, catcher is home. Very simple. Catcher, you're backing up, determining on where the play needs to be, third base or home. In this play, 
Our second basement is the first cutoff man. Our first basement, instead of being the in cut of the infield, you are the second cut. You are the backup cutoff man here. You are the person that's 30 to 40 feet. In this play, our shortstop comes to the pitcher's mound of the infield. Now, this play is very similar. Some of you might realize it. The Derek Jeter pitch play against Oakland A's where the ball is hit down the right field line and Derek Jeter comes across the infield and shoves the ball to Jorge Posada for the tag play at home. Now, the reason that play looks so spectacular is because Derek Jeter, the shortstop of the New York Yankees, was late getting to the middle of the infield. He was late reading that overthrow from right field, and he was late to get to that ball to shovel to Jorge Posada. If he's on time, he's in that spot early, he makes that play look routine, and it does not look like a spectacular play. The only reason that play looks so spectacular is because Derek Jeter was late getting to where he needed to be in the infield. Our shortstop needs to come to the middle of the infield, reading. If he all of a sudden needs to become the cut forward, so our shortstop's coming here. This is where he would be. He's coming here, determining if he either needs to become the cut forward situation, or if he needs to determine if he needs to become the cut three person. A different play can happen determining on where the runners are at the time, speed of runner, stuff like that. So our right fielder is getting the ball. It's going to our second baseman. Our second baseman is then determining to throw the ball home or wherever the play needs to go to. Our shortstop's are waiting in limbo. You're waiting to see if you're becoming a cut fourth man or if you're becoming a cut three man. Our first baseman is 30, 40 feet behind the second baseman, being the back off cutoff man. Our left fielder is busting in once again, covering second base. Every base needs to be covered. Our left fielder, you're doing nothing. You need to bust in. You need to cover second base. Our pitcher, you're waiting over here in limbo in the third base line, over far in foul territory, determining if you're going to be the cutoff man to a cut three or the backup for a cut four. Again, that is extremely, extremely confusing. Please ask questions. I do not expect you to understand it. We'll redraw all the right again. Ball down the left field line. Here, our left fielder is tracking over to get the ball. Our center fielder is going over to be our backup. Our shortstop is the cutoff man. Once again, we're getting back to a basic situation here. This is what we were going over earlier. Same thing on a ball hit to left center. Our second baseman is then tracking over, being man 30, 40 feet behind our cutoff man. Our third base is at third base. Our first baseman is coming in, back to the basics. You're in the in-cut of the infield. You are looking to be that guy for a cup. You're be looking to be the cutoff man for a cup four situation. And the same thing as earlier, our right fielder is busting it in to cover second base. Everybody has a job to do. All nine men have movement on the field. All nine men need to be talking, explaining exactly where they are. So that way all the teammates know everybody is in the right spot. So once again, very basic, back to as if it was a ball left center or right center. Down the left field line. Our shortstop's tracking over. Our second baseman's the backup 30 to 40 feet behind the shortstop. Our first baseman's coming into the in cut of the infield, looking to be the man for a cut four situation. Our right fielder is backing up second base. So really, in double cut situation, the only thing that changes is when balls are hit down the right field line. If you have questions about it, ask. Please, this needs to be covered. This needs to be understood for when this happens in a game. Everybody needs to be in the right spots. Our first baseman needs to know exactly where he needs to be on balls down the right field line versus other spots on the diamond. Very simple. Once you start to understand it, you are not going to understand it until your first time through. So once again, please, if you're confused, rewatch the video, ask questions. Do not be afraid if you do not understand it. I will do my best to try to explain this much better. Thank you, boys.